Hey, here's another quick video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. It's only about a four minute video, so I'm going to have to talk fast. This is an aluminum weld repair on a little, uh, I guess it's a little, some kind of little cargo rack for a motorcycle. I didn't really get the whole story. A friend of a friend brought it to me, and it was for his friend, and it was a freebie, and uh, so I couldn't match it up and, and uh, make sure it was going to fit or anything like that. So what you have to do in situations like that sometimes is you have to match up the broken uh, surfaces. So you got to leave them alone. I would like to clean all that weld off of there and fit it up and, and put a nice clean uh, stack of dimes bead on there, but that's not possible. I got to leave all that mess on there so I have something to line it up because the main thing is that it fits back on what it came off of. So you can kind of see why this thing might have uh, broken because uh, they didn't wrap the corners much and they didn't bite into that thin wall tubing much. They got a big heavy chunk of aluminum there with only about a 30 thousandths wall tubing and so uh, they just barely nipped it and it sat there probably in a bind and vibrated and uh, eventually just uh, popped loose. So uh, I'm going to just uh, line it up the best I can, leave that fractured surface alone, get it to line up perfectly if I can, kind of wiggling it around till it kind of mates up and then I'm going to use uh, what's known as a third hand which is just a homemade tool uh, to hold it in place. Now you can see here how much they didn't wrap the corner around there so I'm going to wrap it real good. I'm going to I'm going to load some weld on those edges so it can't rock much when it's uh when it's in service again. You see how much weld is on it? That's a lot of weld to pop loose, but obviously it's only as strong as that 30 thousandths wall tubing. So uh no matter how thick this is. So I'm going to try to put a nice heavy bead on that. So a third hand tool, you can make them out of anything. Any chunk of metal, a big a big uh piece of bar stock and some and some pieces of round stock uh, bent over and sharpened on the end and uh, I'm holding the camera here with one hand and I'm going to show you it's, it's pretty easy to use because you can see I'm doing that with the other hand and if I can you know position it hold it all in one and with one hand you know it's, it's a pretty easy tool to use but this is really great for holding odd shaped things in place while you get some tack wells on them so I put a little pressure on that thing get it lined up and uh, and put some tack welds on it and uh, like I said I'm going to load those ends up pretty good. It's not going to weld pretty because that nastiness that's inside that oxidized crack. So um, it did. It, I felt pretty confident that the weld was going to hold. Just was not proud of it at all. I mean it, it just kind of looks like crap but if you look at the welds on the rest of this thing it, they, they kind of fit right in. Alright, see the edge there, how, the, how much they, they, they barely wrapped it around the corner. That gave this little part opportunity to sit there and flex and wiggle, and, uh, and that's why it popped loose. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit it pretty heavy on those, on those edges, and uh, I can't weld on the other side because there's something that goes up against there. And if I do, it probably won't fit, and I'll be getting it back, and it's a free job anyway. So I'm just going to try to make sure it, it works, and I get it the first time. Again, no, no, no writing home about these welds, but uh, they're, they're solid. Again, it's dirty. You know, when you start welding and cooking stuff out of cracks like that, you're just trying to, trying to get some metal in there and get it to stick good. It's not going to be a nice, pretty bead. Again, I had to leave that other end without any weld because there was something that that fit up against. So, look at the welds on this thing, and you can see the one, the one I did kind of looks just like those. So, it'll, it'll be okay. It'll be sometimes you have to settle for just okay. It's a shame, but that's 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 just life. Okay, so again, the, the, the I guess the real lesson in this is sometimes sometimes you have to uh, leave the fractured surface alone just so that you'll have a, a, a mating surfaces to match up, and so something will fit after it's welded. Now I could have tacked this thing and then you know then ground it out, but I would have risked. So anyway, I thought since I wasn't able to show you the weld. I'll show you some of the well of some of the how-to uh, how-to training videos I'm working on. I got a much better camera, so uh, those videos should come out a whole lot better. I haven't got it dialed in yet, but at least you can get some clarity on the puddle. And this is how you would do a well that's kind of uh, oxidized and contaminated, like that crack. Nice and slow, forward and back, coaxing the puddle ahead, letting that cleaning action work. All right, see you next time on WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.